Mary, Queen of Scots, had already had her dinner and changed her clothes for the evening, when four men knocked at her door with the most urgent news. She had been found guilty of treason and was to be executed at eight o'clock the next morning. Mary displayed complete calm at the news. She had been imprisoned in England for 19 long years by her cousin, Queen Elizabeth I, and she was ready for her life to end. She responded to the men by thanking them for such welcome news and said, you will do me a great good in withdrawing me from this world, out of which I am very glad to go, on account of the miseries I see in it and of being myself in continual affliction. I am of no good and of no use to anyone. I have longed look for this and have expected it day by day for 18 years. She put a hand on a Bible and swore emphatically that she was completely innocent of all the crimes she had been convicted of. Her last hours were spent making sure her servants were taken care of after her passing, dividing her last remaining belongings, and finally, writing her last confession to her confessioner and almoner as she was denied the ability to give her final confession to a Catholic priest. She also wrote her brother-in-law, the King of France, about her sentencing and conviction. The next morning, as she walked to her end, it was said that Mary was almost cheerful and was seen smiling. Though she was unable to walk unassisted due to her rheumatism, Mary held her head with a regality and conviction. She wore a black satin gown worn over a brownish red velvet petticoat, and on her head she wore a white headdress with a long white veil trimmed in lace. She was initially told she would not be allowed to have anyone with her during her actual execution because they were afraid that her ladies would cry and wail and possibly dip their handkerchiefs in her blood. It was finally agreed that Mary could indeed have a chosen few with her of those who had served her for so long during her captivity. There were around 300 people in the great hall of Fotheringhay Castle to watch the end of the great Mary Queen of Scots. In the large room was a wooden stage, all draped in black, the block, and a cushioned stool. After the execution summons was read, speeches made, and prayers said, the executioners asked Mary for forgiveness for what they were about to do. She told them, I forgive you with all my heart, for now, I hope you will make an end of all my troubles. The first blow of the executioner's ax missed Mary's neck, cutting instead the back of her head. The second blow severed all but a small sinew. The last piece was cut with the ax going back and forth like a saw. The executioner then lifted the head of the former queen from the hair, yelling, God save the queen! And while he did this, the head fell away from the hair still in the hands of the executioner, where it was seen that Mary had in fact been wearing an auburn wig and that the queen's actual hair was short and gray. It is said Mary's lips continued to move for a quarter of an hour after the execution. Before being buried, Mary's heart and entrails were removed and secretly buried somewhere on the Fotheringhay Castle grounds. The garment she wore, the block, and anything that could possibly be used as a relic was also burned. Her body was put in a heavy lead coffin where it sat for almost six months. Mary had requested to be buried at either the Basilica Saint-Denis with her first husband, or in Reims with her mother in France. Elizabeth denied this request. Instead, Peterborough Cathedral was chosen. 
The coffin was finally taken after so many months in the middle of the night to the cathedral for fear that there would be demonstrations and rioting. Mary was given a Protestant state funeral. No fellow Scotsmen were present. Mary, Queen of Scots, was 44 years old when she died. <laughs>